depending on the word of God, you're thinking about that word. And you're feeling yourself. You're feeling if your at all, while you're speaking and you're breathing or you're sneezing, Marriage is a covenant of affectionate love, what we call affectionate friendliness. Followed the second gentle voice and decided to take it. When difficulties come, you will be able to stand. Remember, when you are knocked down, Banner over us is love. love is His banner over us is love. His banner over us is love. Good evening, viewers, and welcome to Bible Talk. Today's edition marks the first edition of a new series on the theme Making Friends for God the joy of sharing in his mission. Oftentimes, the relationship between ourselves and God is perceived from the angle of a father-child relationship or from the angle of a husband-wife relationship, sometimes even from the angle of savior and saved. The notion of friendship, though evoked, is usually not emphasized. But in John chapter 15, verse 15, Jesus makes a declaration which in itself is a change of status. He says, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because all the things I have heard of my father I have made known unto you. God calls us into friendship with him mm. and he expects that we also will become friend makers for him through mm. witnessing. Amen. But for starters, we really need to understand why witness. My name is Samuel Goykuram Four, and uh, in the spirit of friendship, I'd like <laughs> to welcome my friends, Theodore Dixon and Constance Wusu to today's Thank you. discussion. Thank you, and I will also Thank welcome you in the spirit, in the spirit of, friendship. of friendship. Thank <laughs> you so much. <laughs> We'd like to begin mm. with a word of prayer as we call on Constance to pray for us. Father in heaven, you are such an awesome God. Oh, yes. God who loves us so much. You are our father. You are our friend. You are our master. You are our leader. You are everything that we need. We give you the glory, the honor, the adoration in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, you have been with us for the last six months of this year. It is because of your mercies that we are, that we've not been consumed with all that is happening around us. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for the opportunity to return here to discuss about you and the kingdom and our relationship and responsibilities as your children. Thank you for saving us and thank you for making us save us for you. As we continue this discussion, we pray that your Holy Spirit will take absolute control, mm -hmm. will teach us what we need to learn, will bless our viewers and listeners, and will even help those that are helping us here. We pray, God, in heaven that the worries of this life will not take us from you, mm -hmm. but will draw us into your fold. Thank you for your love for us and your faithfulness in our lives. In Jesus' name, yeah. amen. amen. Once again, welcome, dear viewers. I would say welcome, dear friends. <laughs> would like to appreciate the following persons um, for writing to us, sending in a comment. So we'll say thank you to Chidima Gift AGC from Abia State. Thank you to Mr. Paul Kingsley from Washoe State. Thank you, Ebere Naomi Oyinyechi from Lagos. Towo Mewo Amos Babani says, thanks for the invite. It was awesome in his presence. Amen. Amen. Also, we want to say <coughs> thank you to you, Uche Blessing, for writing all the way from Enugu. 
page note Simone, um, all the way from Dumaguet City in the Philippines. Wow, wow. that's, that's, that's interesting, quite really. Far. Costly Morgan Charles from Papua New Guinea. Oh, <laughs> oh. And uh, we have Olajide Dada, this great lesson from the Sabbath school crew. When we have quiet time, we mirror him throughout the day and we will not go astray. Thank Amen. you for that Amen. comment. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth Okonkwo says, biblical meditation is in tandem with what psychologists call mindfulness, which helps us to focus less on self. I want to believe that the writer is a psychologist. Uh, well, that will be a good thing to study on a little more. Sunday, Didam Audu says, God bless Samuel, Constance, and Theodore. God bless the you too. Banqueting. God, bless you too. God bless you too. Totem FT, happy Sabbath, children of God, watching from Edinburgh in Scotland. Yeah. Also watching with two sisters, Daryl and Cindy. And uh, Daryl said, I'm happy with the discussion. Mm -hmm. It's very uplifting. Praise we'll God. Amen. We thank God Amen. for your lives, Daryl and Cindy. And may God continue to bless you all. Amen. Thank you all for writing. And uh, we really love you all. Back to our lesson today. It's titled, Why Witness? Mm -hmm. And uh, we're talking about making friends for God. It's mm -hmm. important for us to understand concepts as we use them. And since we're talking about witnessing, I think it would be good for us to define that word. What is witnessing actually? Witness. Witnessing. Witness. <laughs> 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 if I see something, mm -hmm. then I'm a witness to that thing. Oh. If I have an... Hear. Yes. If I hear it, oh. I'm a witness. Mm. If I experience it, mm -hmm. if I observe it, I'm a witness. So I could be called mm -hmm. to give a witness to what I have seen. Or they that give... Way, that way you're witnessing. That's, that, that's <laughs> where I'm witnessing. Mm -hmm. They witness in court. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. um, if there's an accident, they will call people who saw the accident to say what they have seen. Mm -hmm. That's witnessing. But in the context of what we are talking about, we are talking about witnessing for God. Mm -hmm. And witnessing is all about God. Yeah. So when I share what God has done in my life yeah. to my friends, I'm witnessing. Mm -hmm. If I had an experience that um, shocked me and God brought me out of it, I share with someone, I'm witnessing. Mm -hmm. um, salvation story. I can narrate how God saved me from who I was to who I am now. Mm -hmm. And when I share that with you, I'm witnessing the love of Jesus to you. I can talk about how Jesus saved my soul, how he came from heaven mm -hmm. to be born of a woman, you know, and then lived on this earth and how he died and the reason for his death and his promise and what he's doing in heaven now. You know, preparing a place for me. And what he's going to and do. And what he's going to <laughs> do, <laughs> coming <laughs> back to take to me take home. I'm finished. witnessing. So that's what, for me, that's what witnessing. witnessing. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. I, think, I think she's got this quite right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you so much for enlightening us, um, Constance. So we will thank move you. to our Bible readings. We have three of them for this first uh, segment. Luke chapter 19, verse 10. I will read that, where Constance will read James chapter 5, verses 19 and 20, and uh, Theodore would read Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. Um, Luke chapter 19, verse 10, that's where we begin from. And uh, it is written, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. James chapter 5, verses 19 and 20. My brethren, if any among you strays from the truth and one turns him back, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save his soul from death mm -hmm. and will cover a multitude of sins. <coughs> Amen. 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 Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days 
spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds, who, being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Amen. 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 So Hebrews uh, chapter 1, verses 1 to 3, here speaks about God revealing himself at various times and uh, in various ways, yet he chose in these last days to reveal himself through his son. What is the peculiarity of God's revela revelation through Jesus Christ? How does it differ from other forms of revelation? Well, you know, various ways of revelation. Mm -hmm. The revelation that God made through Jesus is a perfect one. Mm -hmm. Jesus came to reveal to us who his father was mm -hmm. and is, his nature, his um, behavior, his character, his love for us, his forgiven spirit. And he wants us to be like his father because his father's goal is to bring us back to himself. Mm -hmm. And he wants us to, he says that we should be perfect. Matthew 5, 48 said we should be perfect as his father in heaven is perfect. perfect. That's perfect revelation. All the other ones are not as perfect. Nature, mm -hmm. you know, nature tells us about God, but sometimes mm -hmm. nature can turn against us somehow, you yeah, know. Because I've seen the because entrance of yes, sin, you know. Yes, mm -hmm. Nature can no can longer provide a full exactly. revelation of God. Events in our lives and circumstances also can pull us to God. But sometimes they turn us away from course, Him. Mm -hmm. If we don't have strong faith, mm -hmm. can just, you know, take us away from God. There are so <coughs> many ways that God uh, reveals Himself to some people. Some people have dreamt mm -hmm. and God has showed them, you know, go to this particular place, do this. I remember a story about a woman that was in a dream in a foreign country and God told him, told her to go to a particular street enter a particular place and then he'll it's a seven day adventist church she, they will give her a bible mm. and that's how she was led to go there are so many stories about her but they are all not perfect situations because anything can happen mm -hmm. but the revelation through jesus christ is a perfect revelation he shows us who the father is he says to philip he who has seen me I've has seen, seen the, the father. father you know yeah. so now that you wanted to say something? Yeah, I wanted to say that, um, <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> when John wrote about Jesus, he wrote from the connection with God in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then he continued in John chapter 1 to bring it down. You know, um, by the time we, you get to John chapter 1 verse 4, he says, In him was life, life, and the life was the light of men. And that light shines in the midst of darkness. Mm. But darkness mm. cannot comprehend. Amen. Amen. Then by the time he gets to verse 14, he says, and that word was made flesh and okay. dwelt among, among us. us. So in revealing himself to us, God allowed Jesus to come and dwell in our neighborhood mm -hmm. so that we can live with him. He can live with us, reveal God. And like um, Constance has said, he came to demonstrate the character of God, the true character of God, especially because Satan had given a wrong picture wrong of impression. whom God is. And so there was need for Christ to come down so that we can see the real nature of God. Mm. And then, you know, w when I was a literature evangelist, I sold one book and I was titled, He Taught Love. Mm -hmm. You know, one big, not too mm -hmm. much book. That book shows the life and ministry of Christ on earth, how he reflected God's mind mm -hmm. and will mm -hmm. throughout his ministry. So I think that um, there wouldn't have been a better way of describing whom God is except by Jesus coming down on earth. And I was just thinking that the fact that he dwelt among us, you said he lived in our neighborhood. Yes. <laughs> also Beautiful picture. <laughs> <No. laughs> <laughs> Makes us realize that we don't have any excuse no, no, if he could make it. Of okay. course. By his grace, we can also mm -hmm. make of it. Of course, he came to teach us that mm. it is possible to obey God. Mm -hmm. It's possible to overcome sin. Mm. And then 
uh, so many things we can talk about. Mm -hmm. And so now that we have uh, this uh, perfect revelation, as we have mentioned, God expects us to participate in the plan of redemption mm -hmm. through witnessing, as, uh, as we have said, something we have seen, something we have experienced. He expects us to share it with, with others. Why do we have to participate in, you know, in, in God's plan of, of redemption and, and how can we effectively do that? Well, let me say that um, God has called us, or, or I will start this way, God's ultimate intention is that we all be saved. Yes. And um, it's a privilege that what angels would have loved to do, mm. God assigned to human beings. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have been saved to serve. Amen. And God chose us as partners mm -hmm. in the business of life saving. Mm -hmm. And but we must understand that just as we have really received this salvation, we are under obligation, you know, to to, to share to share it with mm -hmm. others. And then um, in John chapter twelve verse thirty two, Jesus said, And I, if I am lifted up, I will draw men, men unto to myself. myself. Mm -hmm. So in the course of our sharing, we must remember that what we are sharing is what God has done, just mm -hmm. like she defined, mm -hmm. you know, witnessing, witnessing yeah. what he has done in Christ and then what he has done in our lives. Mm. And so we, we do not have an excuse. Mm. I do not have an excuse for not sharing the gospel mm. because this is the assignment we that have God to do. Has given us. And then I will add that um, because I have been redeemed, mm -hmm. I need to help others mm -hmm. to be redeemed. You know, the joy of what God has done for me in my heart will not allow me to keep quiet. Mm -hmm. That's fine. If I see someone who is struggling, somebody who does not understand and does not understand, and I already know, I, I, I have the obligation, as he has said, but apart from that, I, I'm thinking of what would happen when that person also sees what I have seen and begin to enjoy what I have joined. That, that desire in me will push me to help the person to get to understand what I have understood and to accept what I have accepted. Mm -hmm. So um, sharing is born out of my love mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to see someone, you know, move from where he is to another place. And I was just also thinking about it, the joy in heaven, when this person will come and say, since it was because of you that I'm oh. here, it's because of you. Maybe my student in the class or a, a co-worker or somebody, this is a Who beautiful song. I, I, I dreamt I went to heaven, something like that. I talked yeah. about, yes. about this. The um, one you, yes, you <laughs> sang for us one <laughs> time. <laughs> yes, you know. And then uh, we also know that there is joy in heaven when one sinner repents and goes to God. Luke 15, 15 7. We're Jesus, to come Jesus, to Jesus said, yes. So it will make me happy to share what I know I, that I, somebody. I also think that mm -hmm. while we were, she was talking, I was just thinking, we have no reason not to share. Mm. Because freely we, we have, have received, received. Mm -hmm. freely we are, we to, are give. to give. In fact, it becomes selfish on our part not to share because um, um, the lesson here talks about God using us as link mm -hmm in reaching out to so others unto people. salvation. It's indeed a beautiful privilege. And uh, we will take a break right here. When we come back, we'll talk more about the reasons why we need to witness. Don't go away.
Welcome back, dear viewers. You are watching Bible Banquet, and today's lesson is titled, Why Witness? We discovered in the first segment that Jesus is God's perfect revelation to us. And we also discover that we do not have an excuse. We don't have a reason why we cannot witness mm -hmm. because we freely have received this gift of salvation and we have the responsibility, the That's duty right. to share that same message to others. But we want to continue uh, by understanding more about what uh, the process of witnessing involves, what it is, how should we approach it. And we'll be reading a number of Bible passages. Theodore, you will begin by reading Luke chapter 15, verses 3 to 10. Um, I will follow closely by reading verses 22 to 24 and 32. And Constance will read Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17. All right, reading from the New King James Version, Luke 15, verses 3 to 10. So he spoke this parable to them, saying, what man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness, and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me. For I have found my sheep which was lost. I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine just persons who need no repentance. Mm -hmm. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it and when she has found it she sh she calls her friends and neighbors together saying rejoice with me for i have found the peace which i lost likewise i say to you there is joy in the presence of the angels of god over one sinner who repents amen amen, amen. Luke 15, verses 22 to 24, it says, But the father said to his servants, Bring out the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring <coughs> on his hand and sandals on his feet, and bring the fatted calf here and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. Mm -hmm. Verse 32 mm -hmm. says, It was right that we should make merry and be glad, for your brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. Amen. Amen. Zephaniah 3 verse 17. The Lord your God is in your midst, a victorious warrior. He will exult over you with joy. He will be quiet in his love. He will rejoice over you with shouts of joy. Amen. Amen. That's Amen. a beautiful picture. Yes. yes. And so we read um, these parables, the three parables about lost things, you know, the yeah. lost sheep, the lost coin, coin and the, the lost, lost son. Uh, what do these parables tell us about the process of witnessing? It tells us that witnessing is intentional. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It um, evokes love mm -hmm. in you. If you don't love, you will not witness. Mm -hmm. Witnessing um, is sometimes not very easy. Of course. You need to um, really want to do it mm -hmm. in order to do it. Tells us that those who witness actually engage themselves mm -hmm. in it. If I use an example of the lost coin the coin didn't know it was lost mm -hmm. the owner knew it and because the coin was valuable to the owner she decided to search As go all the way. she lit the lamp mm -hmm. she swept she, she searched until she found it the coin didn't know what was happening to to it, to it. Mm -hmm. but 
the owner knew and until she found it and when she found it she was so happy which means there are many who are lost but don't know they, they don't are even lost. know they are lost okay. so it becomes a burden on us when we see such people to reach out to them to do whatever we can do to bring them back and when that happens there is joy mm -hmm. the sheep probably knew it was lost but didn't know how to get they back, back. Yeah. again um, the re re responsibility fell on the owner so the responsibility falls on us to look for our brothers and sisters who we think are not where they should be mm -hmm. and when the shepherd found the sheep he was very happy hung it around his neck and rejoicing went home <laughs> and, you know <laughs> went home yeah. and the, the story of the prodigal son mm. likewise he, while he was even thinking reciting his memory verse of what he was <laughs> going to tell his father the father was already waiting yeah. waiting to receive yeah. didn't even allow him to he finish, didn't finish it. no he didn't finish. discarded what he was wearing brought the fatted calf you know the the joy so witnessing involves um, your, your making a decision to help someone else. Commitment. Commitment mm. and persevering. You know, persevering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it affects your character. The person may be a naughty person. You want to <laughs> love him and oh love yes. him for the Lord and yeah. love him into the kingdom, you know. It calls for patience. Mm. It calls for perseverance. It calls for all of you doing, even if you have to, change something in order to get that person over to the um to the side of god mm -hmm. you want to do it not for any gain but because the love of god in you want to ask someone to come and share with you what you have gained mm. so that's sacrifice yes a lot of, a sacrifice. of sacrifice in fact i i wrote down here value placement mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i think these parables you know have taught me value placement because in each of them, we see value placement. Mm -hmm. It is the value that you is placed place on, it, on yes. either the, the, coin, the coin, the sheep, or the, or sheep. Or the, or the lost. No, you could have said, I have a 99. Yeah. What am I doing with yeah. the one? In fact, somebody has asked that question some time ago. Why not forget the one the and one. go with the 99? Mm. And the answer is that the security of the 99 is is founded on, on that one. That on that one. one. That. Because if the, the 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 shepherd did not care about that, that one, one he will not care the next day another one will get the second one yes and he will lose the other one of them yes oh yeah so this, the security of the 99 is dependent on him his attitude his attitude towards, towards the one, one. and that we makes could sense. see we could see the shepherd going all out of his way so for me i see sincerity mm -hmm. you know the the when you talk about searching mm. Searching is different from looking for mm -hmm. something. When you are looking for something, it is at a very simple phase. Yes. But when you're the, searching. the intensity now comes when you are searching, overturning mm. everywhere. Mm. And if that could happen, it means that all of us are under obligation to give our best, go the extra mile in looking, looking. for the lost. Mm. And um, Romans chapter 10 verse 14 talks about how will they know if they have not been told? Mm. So we cannot fold our arms and wait for somebody to change. We have to go out on our ways. And when that happens, you might be insulted. Mm -hmm. In fact, because the person is not seeing what you are seeing. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I, I got stopped last week with um, a resistant counselee. I have a counselee. My counselee became resistant and two of us started fighting. I went online to read how to deal with a resistant Counselee. <laughs> yes, because I shed tears. Mm. I didn't want to lose my counselee. And I know I wanted to, what I was doing for her is something good. So I went to read and I realized that when you meet a resident counselee, change your attitude, mm -hmm. change your approach. So mm -hmm. it's not it's trying not about it's not about a mm -hmm. counselee. So change your what approach. You? So I followed through and I prayed. I said, okay, what is it that you, did, you need to do differently? I, I did it and it worked. Mm. So witnessing if can get mm. to a point where somebody doesn't want to hear about Christ. You went to do research. Well, why <laughs> wouldn't it? But we have to keep growing. In yeah. the process of saving lives, mm. we must continue to learn. Yes. We must continue to learn so that we can effectively do the work mm. that the Master has called us to do. Mm. Mm. Constance, have you ever imagined what it would sound like to hear God sing? 
<laughs> wow. You wow. Know, the, the Bible tells us that God rejoices over mm -hmm. us with, mm -hmm. with singing. Uh, why does God rejoice when individuals are saved? You know, trying to answer that question, even though <laughs> we're not having, I always, I have my own theologies, mm -hmm. you know. I always tell people that, you know, this is just my way of theology making of myself, yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, theology. I said, you know, <laughs> when Jesus comes to take us to heaven, God is not just going to sit on the throne and wait for us to start coming one by one. Mm -hmm. He'll be so anxious, he'll be at the gates of heaven waiting for us. And as we come one by one, he'll hold us, embrace us and say, you know, dry our tears and say, welcome home, children. Mm -hmm. The battle is over. Amen. He will not just be sitting there <coughs> waiting. He will come like the prodigal father mm. did. Yeah, you know? I was just so going to say that. heaven rejoicing, I may not be able to describe it. Mm. You know, the song in a, is a, a hymn book. Um, That's a holy, holy, holy. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. You For know, the angels, angels never, never felt, felt the, the joy that our salvation, that salvation brings. brings. Mm. I can, you know, I'm thinking about all the musical instruments in the world, all the <laughs> angelic oh. voices and yeah, plus and everything, you know? That it's, it's heaven rejoices. He said that there's more joy in heaven when one repents. And we're not just thinking about one, you know? Each time experience Nobody with is. that. Let's mm. come back to that question, why? Why? Why does he rejoice? Yeah, be because we live in the context of the great controversy. Mm. Right from the time, you know, um, Lucifer fell from heaven, the character of God has been, you know, a stake. Uh, a stake. Mm -hmm. His real person. Oh, oh. And everything is being done from the, on the other side mm -hmm. to discredit God. Mm -hmm. And God in his nature is not fighting back. Mm -hmm. But he, he is, the Holy Spirit is working to see how every one of us mm -hmm. can see the love of God oh, oh. and be attracted to it. And so when a sinner is saved, Satan loses that battle. Mm -hmm. battle. Okay, mm -hmm. so the kingdom of darkness is depopulated mm -hmm. and the kingdom of God it's is populated. populated. And um, I, I want to say that um, when we give our life to Christ, we give evidence that God is love. Mm -hmm. We give evidence mm -hmm. that the, 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 the death of Jesus on the cross is not in vain. Mm. So, and remember that, uh, you know, sometime, I think it's Ellen White or someone that said, that even if it were for one person, yes. mm -hmm. Christ would have we also have died. Mm -hmm. And so it, it, it resonates with the value mm -hmm. that God places on an individual soul. The value That's placement, what, once again. Yeah, yeah. You know, value <laughs> placement, <laughs> that, that the whole of heaven will go into, you know, singing. Mm -hmm. And um, we did this song some time ago. It made news in heaven mm -hmm. when I got saved. Wow. Um, I wish I could do a stanza, <laughs> if you don't mind, you know. We don't you know, mind. <laughs> you know, that song is something that gives an idea of what happens in heaven. Mm -hmm. When I got sing saved, it. not you, not sing, when sing. I got saved. <laughs> it didn't make the papers in this world when I prayed through. It didn't seem to matter to all but just a few. Oh. But in the golden streets of glory, celebration banners waved. It made news in heaven yeah. when I got saved. Angels are rejoicing, hallelujah strong. When Jesus touched my life and I was changed. Everyone in glory's realm knew my name was written there. Mm -hmm. It made news in heaven wow. when I got saved. Amen. I think we need to learn that song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 It was yeah. in heaven yeah. when a sinner Amen. returns. And that's so why the father jumped out of his mm. house and oh, went, went to looking for him. Mm. One of my friends said, God has a rich sense of humor. Yeah, mm. he does. He does. He doesn't frown the way I used to frown sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and his main purpose is our salvation. Oh, he yes. created us to love us. Mm. Mm -hmm. And when we lost that opportunity, he didn't give up. He yeah. could have winked, but he brought, came back. Send Jesus, and his goal is to have us back to That's himself. Okay. Amen. Amen.
We'll take up another set of Bible passages, Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 10. Um, Constance, you will read that, as well as Acts chapter 20, verse 35. Theodore, you would read John 7, verses 37 and 38, and uh, Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Deuteronomy 15, 15 10. 10. You shall generously give to him, and your heart shall not be grieved when you give to him. Because for this thing the Lord your God will bless you in all your work and in all your understandings. Amen. Amen. And the other one is? Acts 20. Acts 20. Verse 35. Acts 20, 35 says, In everything I showed you that by working hard in this manner you must help the weak. And remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he himself said. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Amen. Amen. John chapter 7, verses 37 and 38. On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Amen. Amen. Luke chapter 6, Luke verse chapter 38. 6, verse 38 says, Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Amen. Amen. We'll take another break right here, and uh, when we come back, we'll talk more about the texts we just read. Don't go away. Welcome back, dear viewers. You're still on Bible Banquet. Our topic, once again, is why witness. And uh, before we went on break, we read a number of Bible passages. Mm -hmm. And the passages spoke of a flow or an overflow. Mm -hmm. And uh, talking about a flow, it spoke, up, it spoke about a flow of water and uh, an overflow of blessings. Now, how can this imagery be applied to witnessing? When you witness, the blessing comes to you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we think we are doing God a favor, mm -hmm. but the blessing comes to you mainly. The joy that you have brought someone from where he is to where God needs him to be gives you joy. Mm -hmm. You see the person growing, you are happy that you have touched somebody's life. It also helps you in another way. You know, if I'm witnessing to you, I want to make sure that you're not going to, people are not going to say things, uh, negative things about me. Because I've become your role model. Mm -hmm. You're looking at me. If I teach you not to lie and you catch me lying, mm. it's a problem. Mm -hmm. So as I witness, it's an opportunity for me to grow. I'm going back to God. I say, you know, I cannot be telling, teaching someone, and I'm not mm -hmm. doing that. I'm reflecting all the time. I'm careful what I do because I'm becoming an I'm, I'm now an ambassador for Christ. So it helps me, draws me closer to God, mm -hmm. teaches me how to pray, teaches me how to forgive, teaches me how to love genuinely. Because mm -hmm. sometimes when you're witnessing to people, they don't even appreciate, they don't understand. It teaches me skill, how to talk how to do it. And of course, witnessing is not only when I say things, it's even the way I Your live. Lifestyle. I'm Your very lifestyle. careful. It's my lifestyle now, mm -hmm. you know, and I don't want Satan to use it, my lifestyle against the person I'm witnessing to look at the person that you're listening to or the person you're following. Mm -hmm. So th the blessing actually is more for me than for the person, person. because it shows me that I'm here, not on my own. I'm on an... Um, what does the word I'm an I am on an, a, a, on an assignment for God mm. and for me. Well. Yeah, you know, I'm 
sharing in the joy of service. Mm. That song. Master. And I then, there will be. oh, there will be joy. Mm. When, the when the work, work is, is done. done. There is joy in the service mm. of the Lord. Yes. And um, one of our pastors will say, it pays to serve Jesus. Mm -hmm. So when we serve him, it is for the good of those that we have mm. touched, but also for our own mm. good, like Constance has shared. Um, during one pastor's appreciation day in my church, a young lady wrote me a note. It's in my office. I have to paste it somewhere. In fact, she slipped that note and did not write her name. She said, I didn't, I'll just paraphrase, I didn't know I still had the need for a father mm -hmm. sure. until I met you. Mm -hmm. Wow. And by the grace of God, in a short time, I'll be joining her in marriage because um, I've mentored her to a long time. So when you have people who, who are happy that God has used you to touch them, mm -hmm. you cannot do any less. Mm -hmm. You have to live like that. And I want to say that um, I found a quote and I said, the happiest people on earth are not those who have fleets of cars, mm -hmm. mansions, intercontinental businesses, Swiss accounts, <laughs> lofty positions, academic or political attainments, mm. but rather those who love God and live for others. Amen. I May believe the Lord it so help much. us. Yeah. Amen. So, Amen. if your joy is not based on the fact that you love God so much and you are an instrument in His hand to touch other lives, I mean, is is an error mm. because every other thing will pass away but the relationship we have with him and the impact we are making in the life of others, especially because witnessing is what makes God happy. Mm. Then when we find it and we do it, heaven rejoices. Well, that reminds me of the story of the Waldensians, mm -hmm. you know, the fourth century. And even of Martin Luther and others who risked everything because of the joy of sharing what they have oh heard. God, yeah. Sharing with them. They didn't, uh, they didn't even own all the things that oh we yeah, own here that bother us. That's Some of them were wanderers. They lived in caves. They were, you know, running, just hanging a, a stack back around them and, and, and moving. So there is joy. Yeah. That's true. Knowing that God is happy mm -hmm. is enough for me to live everything I got. And I just pray to God, you know, to help me. Because sometimes um, there are things that come with it that mm -hmm. are not nice, you know, persecution, Name calling, course, you know, uh, uh, scorning, and all that kind of LNG, thing. LNG LNG black. You know all those, <laughs> <laughs> you know how those <laughs> things. You know? it, during no. these hundred days of prayer, yeah. it's been wonderful to read about. Uh, you know the, the the series. This series since last week has been. I will go. I'll go to my neighbor. Hmm. I'll go to my family. You know, going, and sometimes it's not always easy. You don't yeah. feel comfortable. You don't want to offend your friends. But that's an assignment. Mm -hmm. yeah. We need to ask God for skill, mm -hmm. for wisdom, for courage to do yes. what he wants us to do. You know? We've been talking about witnessing and growing. Um, Theodore made, uh, shared an, an experience you know, about uh, this young lady that mm -hmm. found uh, a mentor in, in him. Constance, do you have any, any experience um, as to how witnessing helped you grow? No, I've already said some of it. It's mm -hmm. really, really, yeah. you know, um, there are so many ways to witness, mm. not just when you're talking. Even praying for people, yeah. for me, that's, that's for many, many, many years has been. Let, let me let me tell her what somebody <laughs> said about her, <laughs> so that you know the impact of your witnessing. A young lady that is going to get married soon, you know about um, um, Nkiru, Nkiru that lived in your house, Favor. Mm. Mm. Yeah, Favor came to my office and she said, I'm going to get married and you know, I thank God for Professor Sisi. Wow. I thank God. I, I didn't know staying with her taught me this much. And you know she's going to become a shepherdess. Yes. So, yes. And the story of how they met shows that she was well thought. Mm. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for sharing. That is <laughs> so we also <laughs> spent I would have even remembered. Yeah, I would have so remembered. So when, oh, when, we, remember. when, we, when we share, when we witness, mm. those that are impacted by our ministry go back and tell the story mm -hmm. of how they are impacted. Mm. And, the story and witnessing God. continues. Yeah, the witnessing yes. continues. You know. mm. Thank you for doing my work. <laughs> 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 it was quite touching. You know, quite touching. The last 
set of Bible passages we will read for today. First Timothy chapter 2 verses 3 and 4. I will read that alongside Second Peter 3 verse 9. Constance will read Isaiah 49 verse 6 and Matthew 24 verses 14, 28 and, and Matthew 28 verse 19 as well. And uh, Theodore would read Second Corinthians chapter 5 verses 14 and 15 and verses 18 to 20. Mm -hmm. So I will begin uh, by reading First Timothy chapter 2 verses 3 and 4 from the New King James Version. It says, For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. And the second passage is found in Second Peter chapter 3, and uh, I'll be reading verse 9. It says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen. 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 Isaiah 49 verse 6. He says, it is too small a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved ones of Israel. I will also make you a light of the nations so that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Amen. Amen. Matthew um, 24, 24, 14 states, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world for a witness to all the nations, and then the end shall come. Amen. Um, Matthew 28, 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 5, from verse 14. For the love of Christ compels us, because we judge thus, that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all, that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Mm -hmm. Verses 18 to 20. 20. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Amen. 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 According to this text, um, what is God's priority for humanity and why should it be our priority too? Mm. Getting us back to himself. Mm. Salvation. He wants us back. We don't belong here. Mm. You know? We are uh, pilgrims. We are pilgrims. Yeah. He wants us back and Satan will be put to shame forever. Yeah. He, he, he blackmailed God and convinced many people to believe that God was a hard taskmaster, that his commands were very difficult to obey and all, all those things. And he's been creating havoc in the world for people to say, truly God is not powerful, God doesn't um, love us, mm -hmm. all those things. They're not true. God's purpose is for us to come back to him and we will see that Satan has been a liar yeah. and a deceiver and uh, God will, will live with him and reign with him. God <laughs> is building a mansion for us. <laughs> he wants us back to himself, Amen. you know. That's the original. He created us to love us and he wants that love to remain. Amen. Yeah, based on that, our attitude should be that of prioritizing witness. Mm -hmm. Because God's intention is that all will be saved. Then it becomes my priority, becomes my life. And as I lo look through even the life of Jesus, when he got the opportunity to speak in Luke chapter 4, you know, from verse 8, 17 and 18, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Mm -hmm. And he declared his manifesto. Mm -hmm. His intention was to seek and save, and save the lost. lost. Um, 
Paul in Romans 1 16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of mm, Christ, Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Mm. And what touches me is that in 1 Corinthians 9 16, Paul says, Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. Mm. And that should be for every one of us. Mm. Mm. It means that for Paul, preaching the gospel is life. life. Mm. Nothing mm -hmm. else is important than that. That's why he went to places preaching the gospel. And I think that we should seize every opportunity to preach the gospel because when we prioritize what God loves, we show that we are faithful to him. Mm -hmm. That means that any other thing we are doing is secondary. Yes. secondary. If we are teaching, if we are, we are medical doctor, even the environment where we live is not an accident for God. Mm -hmm. There has to be a reason why he placed us there. Yeah. We must be conscious of the fact that if I'm working right here and I'm earning salary, that is, it is not what I'm teaching or what I'm telling people uh, that uh, has brought me here. What has brought me here is to that be a the, to be a witness to oh, God oh. every day. It's a, it should be my lifestyle. Yeah. When people see me, they'll start looking, why is she different? Mm. You know, that's my prayer. <laughs> why is she oh, different? Yes. And then they will know that, um, oh, because God has the touched love God the love stress. of God. And, I, and, and they want to see that love of God in me. And I will transfer <coughs> that love, you know, to them. Talking about the love of Christ that mm -hmm. constrains us, as we read in Second uh, Corinthians right. chapter mm -hmm. 5, verse mm -hmm. 14, mm -hmm. how does the love of Christ transform us into real witnesses? Uh, maybe I want to tweak the question a little bit. You know, what would be different um, if we were to witness based on something else other than the love of God? Mm. It will be very artificial. Of course. Very, mm -hmm. very artificial. It won't be genuine. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like getting the job done. Let's just get the job done and go to the real thing. Mm -hmm. You know, let's just do um, what we have come here to do. Okay, so let me do this uh, Bible study for him, but that's not really my intention. It will be also, how can I be saying what I don't know and mm -hmm. what I don't have? Compartmentalization. Jesus, <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> Compartmentalization. Yeah. Jesus says, describes <laughs> such people as um, honoring him with, with their, their lips, lips and their hearts, and are, their not hearts are not with him. They are worshiping in vain. Matthew 15, verses 8 and 9 say that we are worshiping them in vain. God instructs us in Deuteronomy 6, verse 4, that the Lord God is one. Verse 5 says that we should love God with all, with all our, our heart, with all, all our mind, all our God. soul, and everything. So we can be uh, witnessing. In fact, there is no witnessing without who we are. Mm. Because you, do you know something? Well, I just Theodore spoke about, about the being. You remember this time he was talking mm -hmm. about being, mm -hmm. moving yeah. from knowing mm -hmm. to yeah. being. And yes. said yes. We yes. Needed something to just be. came to my mind. We are mm -hmm. witnessing all the time. Yeah. Every time we are witnessing, That's whether we are whether it's bad witness <laughs> or, or good, good, good witness, we are witnessing all the time. Yeah. And so we need to know that uh, we need to do what we have been called to do, witness for God. You know, witnessing and service are not an end in themselves. Mm -hmm. Witnessing is important. Mm -mm. Even service, you know, there is joy in the service of God. Mm -hmm. But the point is that if, except witnessing and services that we render come from a converted heart, mm -hmm. They are just an end in themselves. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And it will take, they will take us nowhere. Don't know where, yeah. So our witnessing should result from the fact that we have been touched. We are constrained. Mm. We are compelled. Mm -hmm. We are controlled. Wow. We are commanded <laughs> by the love of God. Mm. So everything I do is not of myself. Mm -hmm. I do we it because pushed. I have been saved. Yes. You know, First Peter chapter 4, I think it's verse 8 now. We love him. Because, because he first loved, loved us. us. So, and yeah. it is that love that compels us mm -hmm. into all that we do mm -hmm. for him. Mm -hmm. And we know, you know, um, the, the place with the Second Corinthians chapter 5, five. verse 20 says, Now we are ambassadors, ambassadors for, Christ, for Christ, not for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Ambassadors are people who represent a nation, mm -hmm. okay, or a people. So we are ambassadors of his heavenly kingdom. Mm -hmm. And the character we are supposed to demonstrate is that of our heavenly father. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, sometimes... We falter because we are human beings. We, we are not able to demonstrate the love of God, the patience in the face of trials, mm -hmm. you know, as much as we can. But he calls us to keep growing. Um, like Constance mentioned last time, perfection. Mm -hmm. God wants us to be perfect like him. So we keep growing into spiritual maturity. Mm -hmm. And it is as we witness that we take the opportunity for that growth. Each yeah. time we go and come back, we, we learn we new reflect, lessons. lessons. We do yeah. a lot of reflections. We pray. And we pray. God reveals to us better ways of serving Him, and by His grace, we will reach our goal.
Wow. Now, the work of sanctification continues yes. until, until the day Jesus comes. Jesus comes. Amen. And so we witness for a good number of reasons. We witness because the love of God constrains us. We witness to grow. We witness because it makes God happy. Yeah. Uh, we witness because God has commanded, commanded us yeah. to do so. And it's a prayer that uh, you, wherever you find yourself, as well as us here, mm -hmm will be a true witness mm. for Christ. Mm. We'd like to leave you with a word of prayer as we end uh, today's lesson, and I will ask Theodore to pray for us. Shall we pray? Dear Lord, thank you for the opportunity to study. Thank you because you have called each one as a witness for you. Mm. Thank you for Jesus who came to die to show us the love of the Father and to have saved us. And thank you for the ministry of reconciliation that you have placed on our shoulders. Mm. Father, in whatever ways we have fallen short in doing this assignment, may you please forgive us. Mm. Help us today to learn to prioritize on what makes you happy, and that is to save the lost. Mm. And help us to get about it with all our life. Amen. As we give our time, our energy, our resources, and our influences in the salvation of others, may our own salvation be sure Amen. and safe. Amen. Bless Amen. every one of us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's such a privilege for me to be with you at this time. The passion I have I like to share with you, and that is natural health care. In this time that we are living in, this pandemic, epidemic, call it whatever you may, but there is a disease around all over the world, and you are bothered, your family is bothered, friends, relatives, and so forth. What can you do to keep yourself safe? It's good to know disease, to know the cause, to know the cure, and to know how to prevent. And that is where the rubber meets the road, how to prevent. Because there's a wise saying that prevention is better than cure. I believe that with all my heart. In fact, the very favorite author of mine, after the Bible, says it well. He says a pound of prevention is far better, far, far better than you try to then mend things up. So if you are ready to prevent, I want to share with you at this time what you can do in terms of how you can live. I'm a naturopathic doctor, and in natural medicine, prevention is a key role. In, pre in making sure that you stay well, rather than trying to reverse the disease. Yes, to reverse disease is necessary, but then how do you prevent it in the first place? Health is wealth. I believe that with all of my heart. Health indeed is wealth. And that saying comes from the Bible. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou might prosper and be in health even as your soul prosper. So how do you live naturally in order to prevent COVID-19? How do you live naturally? One part of living naturally is what you eat. And that is just the short message I want to give you at this time. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. When you wake up, you're going to break a fast. That means you didn't eat late at night. Yeah? Mm -hmm. No, don't eat late at night so that you'll be able to take a very good breakfast. Breakfast, nuts, grains, and fruits. That is the original food given to man right from the beginning. So if you start your day with a meal filled with lots of fruits, so imagine you have a plate, and in your plate, divide it into two. Half of it should be fruits. Fruits bananas eat your oranges don't suck it and throw away the most important part the fiber 
very important. The whitish part of your orange are just as important. Eat them. Take away the seeds. Take away the skin and eat your oranges. Bananas, mangoes, pineapples, purple. The Lord has blessed us with a lot of bounties. Yes, I know. You say, I go to the market, I can't find them. It's because they don't have customers. That's why they don't bring them to, to the market. So you and I become customers to buy fruit, and you'll see that they'll begin to bring fruit to the market. Start getting fruit. You need a lot of fruit when infectious diseases are all around. Eat them. Then get your greens. Don't filter your greens. Eat everything, the fiber. You need that fiber to take out toxins from your body so that you can be in the best of health. I'm going to have the privilege, and as you will like it too, continue to share with you the things that will make you live in good health. But start with your breakfast. Start with a good breakfast of fruits with some few nuts, if you can find them. That's not the key, but your fruit is what you must eat every day. And then vegetables were added to our meal when sin entered. Therefore, you need to eat vegetables. And you might notice that I'm talking about fruit that is harvested from the ground. If you choose animal sources of food, you are just taking your food second hand. They have to process it and then you eat their flesh. It's second hand. Why don't you take it fresh and enjoy the freshness of your food? All the nutrients are still intact then you have it all. You enjoy it. And what? It makes you to be in the best of health. Start with that and you'll be sure that you will not miss out because they are loaded with the vitamins. Phytonutrients are found only in phyto plant nutrients. You keep on doing this and you'll be in the best of health. I promise you it has worked and it will continue to work. Good breakfast is the best meal of the, of the day. Skip that late night food. Your lunch, make it with a lot of vegetables. Take some raw vegetables. The Lord has blessed us with plenty of vegetables in our culture. Amuno tutu. All of those vegetables, they are wonderful. So I pray and hope that we will continue to have this interaction and I'll be able to share with you the wonderful things that will keep you in the best of health. Stay with me and the Lord will be with you and the Lord will keep you. Till another time when we shall meet this method of communication, I shall know that the Lord has been with you because I will know by the grace of God that the things I'm sharing with you, there will be feedback to the studio to help us to know how you are being blessed. The Lord be with you and keep you till we meet again. Friendliness and how to flatter your spouse. You're welcome to our marriage and family life program. With me in the studio today is my wife, Dr. Mrs. Elizabeth Okonkwo. Today we are going to handle only questions and answers. And so, Madam, <coughs> over to you. We have four questions here, and we are going to handle them one after the other. The first one says, you said that putting on a marriage ring is a sin. Why do some pastors put it on? Well, I remember I didn't say putting on marriage ring is a sin, but I said using a ring to seal your marriage because marriage is a covenant and a holy thing and a life thing. And m covenants are usually sealed with holy things that connote life. I mean, a ring does not connote life. It is also temporal. I said using rings to, as your throat to seal your covenant is what is sinful. Putting it on is not the sin. But using it as uh, your throat 
or your seal for the covenant. The, using the, a ring, like I said, if there is a need for you to wear a ring, you can go and buy and give your spouse an exchange as gifts after you have been joined. But the real thing that is suitable for sealing a, a, a marriage covenant is the Holy Bible because the word of God is life and is everlasting. Uh, the ring is like a badge. When you, it, it, it's not, I don't consider ring as part of ornament. It's like a badge, something to show that you are married. And so if people put it on, they've not sinned, in my own opinion. Uh, a badge is not part of your decoration, decorating self. It's just like a badge to show you are a married person. Thank you very much. The second one says, in traditional marriage, the couple or partners don't assent to the covenant. Are they not free from the marriage covenant? Now, I want you to understand that marriage is given by God. And in giving the package, the covenant is part of the package. It's in the package. And so it doesn't matter whether what we actually do in a wedding, in the church, for example, is to affirm what God has done. That's why we are not the one joining. The pastors are not the one joining. And the past, that's why pastor will say, by the authority invested in me, I pronounce. The pastor, we are only affirming what God has done. And that's why when we finish pronouncing, we say, what God has joined together, let no man put us on. That tells you, it's not we that join. Every marriage is joined by God. And the marriage covenant is an intrinsic part of the package of marriage. And so once you have accepted to get married, you have accepted the covenant. It doesn't matter whether you recite it in a ritual or not. It is there, just like we do sometimes in a computer program. They will say, if you do this, accept. You ha once you accept to be married, you have accepted to enter God's school. You have accepted the covenant. And it's binding. And it's binding. Thank you very much. You said that to shout at one spouse or call names or fight is breaking the covenant. Is it possible not to be angry in marriage? Yeah, uh, uh, everything that is not right is unrighteous. And every unrighteousness is sin. Shouting at your spouse or calling your spouse names or fighting is sin. Remember, the Bible says, be angry but sin not. You cannot stop people from making you angry. And of course, it's not possible for you to uh, stop being angry. But you can stop yourself from reacting to whatever makes you angry in a sinful way. And so you can be angry. What is important there is learn to control your anger in such a way that your reaction does not make you do something that God will hate, a sin. You can be angry, but sin not. Yeah, and that uh, tells me that uh, in psychology, we have four major emotions. And anger is one of the emotions. We have anger as an emotion, and we have depression, we have anxiety, we have contentment. And the interesting thing about it is, is that out of the four emotions, three of them are negative, in quotes, and we are anger falls in. Anger is an emotion. Every human being experiences emotion naturally isn't it yes yes but the way we <laughs> respond like you rightly said is what makes the difference we should not be angry and sin you can experience anger but your response is what matters thank you very much the last one says how can i get your adv advice for a marriage that is about to crash a marriage that is about to crash you know, we, we cannot get the nitty-gritty or the information from the two partners here in the studio. So we need the, uh, the people involved to come and see us through our contacts so that we can listen to them, be able to assess, diagnose, and uh, get a treatment package for them. Until we come your way again, this is where we draw the curtain for today. The Lord bless you 
and bless your marriage. Thank you and bye.
morning, children. Happy Sabbath to you all. Our Bible story for today can be found in the book of Luke, chapter 8, beginning from verse 40 to the end, which is verse 56. It's about one of the miracles that Jesus performed when he was on earth. Jesus performed a lot of miracles, especially that of healing the sick. And in this particular Bible passage, we have the story of the daughter of one of the rulers of the synagogue. I guess one of the leaders in the church at that time. His name was Jairus. He had an only child, a daughter, who was about 12 years old. And she was terribly sick to the point of death. Now, luckily, Jairus heard that Jesus was passing by and he decided to go and plead with him to please come and see to the healing of his daughter. Jesus agreed to go to his house with him. But uh, when Jesus was on the way to Jairus' house, you know, usually when he was passing, a lot of people will be after him, also seeking for one help or the other, especially that of healing. And one of such people that were following him that there was a woman who had the problem of blood flowing out from her body, you know. I don't know how that happens, but she had spent almost everything that she had ever earned to get that problem solved. And each time, there was no solution. But this day, she also heard that Jesus was passing by. And she decided that, you know, I may not be able to see him because of the many people that follow him. But uh, what I would just do is touch the edge of his dress. Whatever Jesus was wearing, she would just manage to make sure that she got the edge touched. And she was so sure that she was going to be healed because you know like we all know jesus is so powerful and that was exactly what she did can you imagine what happened immediately she got hold of the edge of jesus's uh, garment the blood stopped flowing isn't that a miracle it is and it, as soon as that happened jesus stopped walking and everybody had to stop so he asked them, who just touched me? And the disciples were wondering, Master, there are so many people following you. And they would have been pushing one another. So there is no way you will not be taught. But he said, no, power just got out of me now. And I know that somebody touched me for a special purpose. At this time, the woman saw she could no longer hide. And so she came out and said, I was the one, told her story. And Jesus said, daughter, you go to your house in peace. Your faith has made you whole. And immediately after that, they they, one, somebody came from Jairus' house and told him, don't bother Jesus anymore because the daughter already died. But Jesus said, no, you don't worry. We will continue. We will go to the house and see the child. And when they got there, he went to the girl's room with only her parents, James, Peter, and John. And he held up the hand of the girl and said, Daughter, arise. And they were like, But this girl is dead. You know, and she said, No, she's only sleeping. To the surprise of everybody, the girl rose up and she, her life was restored back to her. Everybody was happy. And Jesus left and told them, Give her food. She will eat because she's alive again. Children of God, this is a great miracle. I'm always excited when I hear, listen or read this kind of stories. And I'm sure you are too. Our God is so big. He is so strong and mighty and there is nothing that he cannot do. This was the experience of the family of Jairus. And I'm sure each one of us can experience him too in all our difficult situations. Let us call upon Jesus. It is never too late. And he will see to the solution of our problems. May the Lord bless you all. I wish you a nice and wonderful Sabbath. Bye. <music>
Difficulties come, you will be able to stand. Remember, God does not fail. His promise is eternal. Our God is alive. Jesus is the King of Kings and the Lord of God. Nothing can remain the same when Jesus is risen. Good morning and happy Sabbath to you all. Our Bible reading this morning will be taken from the book of Job. Job chapter 22, I'll read verses 21 and 26. Job 22, I'll read verses 21 and 26. Submit to God and be at peace with him. In this way, prosperity will come to you. 26, surely then you will find the light in the Almighty and it will lift up your face to God. May the Lord bless this reading in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning and happy Sabbath to you all. It's a pleasure to be in your presence today again to share the word of God. Today, by the grace of God, I will be speaking to us and I invite us to dialogue together on the sermon that I titled, To Be Happy in God. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you so very much for today. Thank you so very much for the blessing of another Sabbath. Thank you so much for grace to be alive, to experience and to see the first Sabbath in the month of July. Father, I accept our thanks and praises in the name of Jesus. Thank you for joining with us from the first half of the year. And thank you for the assurance that you will join in with us in this second half of the year. Father, as we go into your word today, please speak to our hearts. Give us understanding. And may the words of today bring blessings to us. I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, I'll be sharing with us, and I want us to dialogue together, like I said, on the sermon that I titled, To Be Happy in God. One way I know that my wife is not happy with me is whenever she tells me that I am not pleased with you. Whenever I hear that from her, 
I know that she's not happy with me. I've probably done something that was upsetting to her. While I believe that it is okay and natural to be unhappy with a fellow human being, I wonder if it is okay to be unhappy or to be upset in God. The question is, can one be unhappy with God? Is there a connection between a successful life and happiness in God? I want you to ask yourself this morning, or I want you to help me ask your neighbor or your friends or those around you, are you happy in God? I invite you to join in with me as we examine some common causes of unhappiness in God, as well as the things that make happiness in God. You might be wondering, is it possible to be unhappy in God? Sometimes it's so surprising to me that those who are usually unhappy in their moments of trials, you know, and sickness are Christians who are probably workers or ministers, you know, of the Lord. And this has stirred up a, a, a thought in me. What is it that will make somebody to be unhappy in God? Is it possible to be deep in God and still be unhappy? And I've come to realize and I've come to discover that actually there's so many people, so many people in the church who are unhappy in God. But you know, oftentimes we play the church and we don't come real until when we're in crisis situation and then the unhappiness will come up. So what are some of those causes of unhappiness in God? On my list here, I have wrong beliefs or perception about God. The Bible tells us in the book of Timothy that the Bible is profitable for doctrine, for teachings and righteousness. And I've come to realize that when you believe in the Bible is faulty one way or the other, this can lead to unhappiness in God. Also, when there's misconception about God, or when your view about God is distorted, this can be because of wrong teaching that you have imbibed, or for other reasons. Another point, or another reason for unhappiness in God is past experiences of self and of others. Some people have had some encounters in life or experiences of life that left them disoriented and unhappy. And when they share this with people or when they talk about this, you know, people hear about it and it stirs up a kind of, you know, thought that will lead to or it will position them in a situation that can cause them to be unhappy in God. So experiences of others and of self can actually build up on happiness in God. Another reason, you know, for unhappiness in God may be unmet needs or an expectation. You know, when we have expectations from God and needs from God, and for one reason or the other, they are not met, this can stir up in us feelings of unhappiness towards God. You know, we feel disappointed in God. And I've heard this from several people. Also, when we have unrealistic expectations from God, you know, God failing short of our expectation, you know, wrong, selfish motive for seeking God. These are some reasons that can stir up feelings of un unhappiness towards God when we have selfish motive for coming to God. Or when we're, our motive for seeking God is wrong. I don't know about what you're going through, but I want to tell you that our God does not fail. There may be a delay, but I'm telling you that God will surely come true for you. All the reasons of unhappiness in God are unanswered prayers. You know, just like I said, people prayed, 
that something will happen, and it didn't happen. Clashes of vision is another thing that I've discovered, another reason for unhappiness in God. You know, when you are pursuing or you are working on something that is outside the will of God or that is contrary to the will of God, when your vision is clashing with that of God for your life, this can lead to unhappiness in God because you will discover that you will be struggling or you will no longer have joy or you no longer have peace because you are working on something that is contrary to the will of God or your expectation is not in line with what God has in stock for you. And so this can lead to unhappiness in God. Of course, unbelief is a very, very cogent power factor that can lead to unhappiness in God when we doubt or when we have unbelief towards God and in the things of God. Disobedience is another factor. That reminds me of this, our song, Trust and Obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. You see, if you fail to trust and to obey, you will be unhappy in God. When we fail to trust or to obey, we will certainly experience unhappiness in God. All the reasons why someone may be unhappy in God may be because of living in denial. When you're living in denial or when you're using God or spirituality or Christianity as a coping me mechanism and you're not facing the reality of your situation. This can lead to unhappiness in God. You see, we don't need to play Christianity. We need to come out and, and, and face the reality of whatever we are going through. Because living in denial can result into unhappiness in God. Of course, when we have anger towards God. And somebody may be asking out there, how can somebody be angry with God? Remember Cain, after God rejected his offering, his sacrifice, he became very angry with God. To the point that when God asked him, where's your brother? He was like, how is that my responsibility? No respect for God at all. At a point in time, Prophet Habakkuk too was confused and it was like, God, what's happening? And in the book of Psalms, severally, you see the psalmist saying, how long, God, how long? Unwillingness to forgive God, this may surprise somebody. Unwillingness to forgive God or receive forgiveness from God will certainly lead to unhappiness in God. Somebody may be asking, how can somebody not forgive God? It may be strange to you, but I'm telling you, it's not strange, especially if you work on a daily basis with people who are passing through pain and suffering. You discover that some people refuse to forgive God because God failed them. God killed their mom. God killed their dad. I have had encounter with believers, former believers who are now atheists and they don't believe in God anymore. And when we trace the roots of their new belief, I discovered that it was because they have a feeling of forgiveness to God. God failed them. They believe God failed them because God failed to heal their mom, to heal their dad, or to save their child or their daughter. Or God took away their job. Or God did not allow them to get an husband. Her willingness to forgive God and to receive forgiveness from God. Sometimes we have been forgiven. As a matter of fact, God is quick to forgive. He said, if we confess, he will forgive and pardon. But sometimes we believe what we have done is so terrible. It's so impossible for God to forgive us. And so we refuse to accept forgiveness from God. And there's no way you live in unforgiveness, either towards God or from receiving from God, and you'll be happy in God. You can play church. However you want to play church. You can attend all the prayer meetings you want to attend. But deep inside of you, 
you know that you are unhappy with God or in God. You know, it's always amazing me anytime I have to read the book of Proverbs, I think Proverbs chapter 17, somewhere there. It says, even in laughter, the heart knows its sorrow. So it's possible to be laughing and to be smiling, but deep within, when all the laughter is over, you go back to that sorrow. But that is not the will of God for you. And I believe that's why God is bringing me this message, to speak to somebody today. And of course, human error, you know, is another reason for so much unhappiness in God. And this has to do, especially with ministers of the gospel, who capitalize on people's ignorance and their vulnerability and have manipulated them, you know, to their own selfish ends. I, can't, I have countless of stories of women who have been manipulated, you know, and used by so-called prophets. Pastors who will tie members, you know, to, to, to their belts. And the members will not be able to do anything unless they see their pastors. And when eventually these people are liberated, they have anger towards God. Meanwhile, God is not the offender, but the victim. Satanic deception and temptation, of course, can also be responsible for unhappiness in God. Crisis in life. Trials and temptations, of course, can bring unhappiness in God. And finally, cares of life. You know, think about the lacks in our life. Think about unaccomplished vision. Think about all the things we desire to have that we do not have. And yet we have been promised that seek ye forth the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And every other thing shall be added unto you. And it's not happening. Before you know it, even unconsciously, well of unhappiness can spring up within us towards God, even though we are still going to church. So what can we do to prevent, to checkmate attitudes, causes of unhappiness in God? I have some suggestions here that I would like to share with you. And I pray they will be of great benefit to you. The number one on my list here is healthy and awesome knowledge of God. A perspective of God that is right and correct. A biblical view of God. You know, I started by saying when we have faulty perception of God, it will lead to unhappiness. Because there are so many views of God out there today that you'll be surprised. And I believe this is one of the reasons I stated in the scripture why Christ came to this world. To reveal to us the true picture of God. For some of us, when we hear God or the Father, we quickly remember our dad. We look to our dad, you know, to get an impression or the picture of God. And because fathers sometimes, most times, we always fail and fall short. We develop wrong view of God. And so for one reason or that, we don't want to have anything to do with God. Even when we're in the church, we cannot trust God wholeheartedly. So you need to embrace a healthy and awesome view, knowledge of God, if you are going to have happiness in God. Secondly, like I said, trust It's difficult to trust somebody you don't know. It's been said over and over again. And so I'm going to encourage you to make effort to know God better, to have the right picture of God so that you'll be able to trust him. Because without trusting God, it's very difficult to be happy in God. Submission to God. You see, as long as we wrestle with God, we will lack peace. And the moment we don't have peace, we can't be happy in God. And so it is essential for us, if we're going to have happiness in God, to submit to God, to submit to the will of God, no matter how strange it might be, no matter how unpleasant it might be, it is necessary for us to get to that point where we can say, Lord, let your will be done. You know, recently I was sharing with some friends 
when I read the, you know, accounts of Jesus Christ towards the crucifixion, especially the agony he went through when he was in the garden of Gethsemane. And three times he wrestled with God. And he said, if it is possible, please take this cup away from me. Then it occurred to me that, you know what? It wasn't easy for Jesus. There was a struggle between him and God. And it was so intense that the, the, the writers of the Bible described the sweat coming out of his body that it was like blood to show the intensity of the agony. As a matter of fact, another translation said he was in the agony of spirit. That shows the intensity of his struggle with the Father. But eventually, he said, let your will be done. It is in submitting to God over that situation that we're going to have peace. And maybe you're hearing me this morning and you're struggling with God over an issue. God is saying, it is in submitting to my will that you're going to find happiness in me. Are you happy in God? Are you willing to talk to someone today? Are you willing to talk to someone about your unhappiness in God? It's time to come out because it's blocking you and God. It's affecting your relationship with God. I found this very interesting as I was reflecting upon this message. What makes a happy church or who makes a happy church? Happy believers or unhappy believers? What will it take for you to be happy in God? I wish you a wonderful Sabbath and the peace of God. Father, we thank you so very much for bringing your word to us again today. I'm convinced and I'm persuaded within me that you are talking to somebody out there today and you're willing to heal that unhappiness inside that your son and that your daughter. It is my prayer that you help us to open our hearts and respond to the voice of your spirit today in the mighty name of Jesus. While we wait for your coming, Lord, keep us happy in you and bless us with your peace always. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.